So today we're going to unbox the Samsung S10e phone. This one just came in and it's going to be an upgrade for a Samsung S9. Well, it's using a really large box. Really large box. There it is. Yes. So inside the phone itself. Um, looks like a little bit of hair onto the onto the uh, case or the back. So it comes with a Samsung fast charging adapter, spinning out five volts and nine volts. Comes with a USB C dongle or a OTA adapter. Comes with a cable, USB C cable, and it comes with a pair of headphones. Is any special on these? So it is cloth wire along with some extra ear pieces. Now this phone is not eligible for a free ear pod, but you definitely want to have the smaller form factor. And you have two cameras here, LED light. Let's turn it on. Let's compare it also to the S9. Let's get started. Let me help you get set up more easily by guiding you. Let's look at the terms and conditions. Once you read and agree to these, we can really get going. You can restore the settings and contents from your old device. It will not be difficult. Okay, so I will do the wireless. The phone is actually smaller height-wise than the S9 by a couple millimeters. It is about, it feels about the same thickness. Actually, it's a little bit thinner. It has the same port locations, although the speaker is more of a grill in the phone. And it has the, it has an extra pinhole, which may be the same as that one. Sidewise, it's the same. Now the fingerprint reader is gone. It used to be right here. So, so now we can see the phone side by side. You can see that the S10 is slightly shorter than the S9. It does not have the curve, although it does have tapered edges. Um, now you also notice that um, the S10 is actually thinner. So if you take a look at the side by side comparison, you can see that it's really thin. Now the back of it um, has the single camera on the S9 and it has a double camera on the S10e. And as you remember, the fingerprint sensor on the S9 is right here, and the S10e is actually on the side right here. So this is great because um, if you don't like, if you, the S10 regular has a fingerprint sensor on the screen itself, but if you don't like to, uh, if, you, if you would like to have a tempered glass case, and there's some issues with it reading it. But the uh, S10e seems to be pretty good at reading fingerprints. I did put my fingerprint in twice, but essentially that's, uh, it works. Now let's look at the app speed, and let's look at the camera for both phones. So I'm gonna load an app, uh, try me at the same time. The DJI Go app is one of the slowest loading apps. So let's see if we can load them together. Oops. <coughs> okay. Let's try more time. Okay, well, that was not. Let's try the Tesla app. About the same. Um, now let's look at the cameras. 
So on the S9, the camera is pretty, pretty clear. I can uh, push the photo, it takes like a little second delay. Now on the S10, I've actually got two settings here. I've got wide view and I've got regular view. So the nice thing about wide view is that it acts almost like a GoPro. I can even do custom views. So for example, let's say that I am, you can see the wide angle lens effect here. So I'm using my uh, wide angle lens, it's a little out of focus, but essentially you can see that uh, GoPro like effect, or I can zoom in. I'm not sure if it's actually switching uh, between the, uh, the different cameras. There's also live focus, which basically has an effect similar to the iPhone where you can actually focus on a specific area and then uh, the other areas kind of get blurry. Um, so the S9 does not have that feature. Um, the S9 effect is very, very straightforward. It looks just like a regular phone as you pan. Now video recording wise, it's about, this, it's very similar. I think they both do about uh, 4K, so the rear video size, the maximum resolution is uh, 3840 by 2160. This is on the S9, and on the S10, you can actually go up to 60 frames per second uh, 4K. Let me see. So both of them actually allow 60 frames per second. You can see here that even under 720 HD is here. Now, I don't normally use that setting because um, it doesn't support video effects, uh, stabilization, etc. So it has built-in stabilizer, but only at the 4K 30 frames per second. Um, now the front camera size is a little bit bigger, better. So you can see here, it does the S9 does Quad HD, which is 2560 by 1440, and the S10 actually does 4K in the front. A whole bunch of different camera modes on the S9, on the S10. Um, so you can see the comparison right here. We've got Instagram, Food, Panorama, Pro, Live Focus, Photo, Video, Super Slow, Slow Motion, Hyperlapse, um, Food, Wide Selfie. So we don't see the wide selfie there. Pan Panorama, Pro, Live Focus, Selective Focus, Photo, Video, Super Slow, Slow, Hyperlapse, and Sports. So the S10 does not have that um, sport feature or the wide, uh, what is it, wide selfie. Um, let's see. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, the phones are pretty similar. Um, the one thing that I like about the S10e is actually pretty interesting. It's the fact that it actually has a built-in screen protector. So the S10 comes with a built-in screen protector and then uh, the S10e happens to also come with it. Now it is plastic, not tempered glass, but with the S9, for me to get a comfortable typing keyboard, I actually had to use a non-temper glass screen protector. Um, so long story short, uh, if I go to advanced features, um, there is a button in here that talks about uh, whether you have a screen protector or not. And it increases the sensitivity of how you type. The S9, I was not able to remap unless I use a, um, a secondary app. But the Bixby, um, I actually set it to open up a flashlight app with a double press. Now I can do the same thing on the S9, but um, the challenge is that that button, if you look at it, is slightly lower. So when I put it into things like a case holder or whatever, or even a stabilizer, then the button can actually pre get pressed. So if you don't like, um, you can set Bixby to open on a double press, which is pretty nice. But again, um, I haven't really had the need to 
use a stabilizer because it has a built-in stabilization. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. Uh, the CPU is a lot more powerful. And uh, yeah, it's a much, much better phone. It is a little bit smaller. Um, the higher end S10 does have a similar size to the S9, but also it allows you to um, have additional cameras. But for the price point, I highly recommend the S10e. It's a great phone, great little package here, uh, double camera system, and of course it's got the micro SD card for additional storage.